and welcome to my August garden guide where I list out all of the things that you can either start from seed or transplant this month along with some important garden tasks. My name is Jara. I teach people how to garden, grow food, raise backyard chickens, and keep bees. If these homesteading type topics interest you, make sure to subscribe to my channel because I post new videos on a daily basis to inspire and educate others. So let's get started with my August garden guide. This garden guide is most applicable to those who are in the southern parts of the United States, zones eight and up, but the information is beneficial to anyone who gardens in a very hot summer climate. It is still very hot outside during the month of August. Many gardeners are experiencing extreme heat coupled with either very dry weather like the west coast states or very rainy weather like here in Florida. Only the toughest plants will survive and continue to produce and I have lots of ideas for you. But first, let's discuss a few items on my to-do list for August. It is time to start planning your fall garden and gathering seeds and plants. I am doing a live series right now on YouTube that I call like my Grow Along With Me series. Basically, I walk you through the whole process of fall garden planning and planting. The next live class will be Sunday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. And the main topic of discussion is sowing anything in the brassica families. So that includes broccoli, cauliflower, cabbages, and also sowing seeds for flowers and herbs. If that's something you struggle with, make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel. That way you get notified of when I go live for that session. And yes, it is summer. It's August. But fall garden planting starts in September for me. So I've already started seeds in July and another round of different kinds of seeds again in August in preparation for planting in either September or October, depending on the crop. Also join my email newsletter. There's a link in the description below so that I can send you the schedule with dates and times. Right now during the month of August, I'm sowing seeds for some major fall crops. Like I said, anything in the brassicas family and onions, but only indoors because these crops will get stunted in growth if exposed to high heat. Plus the environment outside is very hostile to baby seedlings right now. I have a lot of rain, diseases, and pests, so I like to sow mine indoors. If you would like to see my whole seed sowing setup, along with a lot of tips and tricks to be successful growing things from seed, check out my How to Sow Seeds guide, which I will link below. August is a huge cleanup month. As my summer crops start to die off after harvesting, I begin the process of cleaning out the garden and solarizing the beds if needed. This whole section here has been solarizing for about two weeks now. The weeds are just getting really crazy. So I wanted to solarize to kill any weed roots and their seeds that are present. So hopefully my fall garden won't have such a bad weed issue. This is also a great time to amend your soil in preparation for your fall garden since it takes a few weeks for amendments and fertilizers to break down. If you're in a rainy climate like me here in Florida, I recommend you wait to amend your soil until the very end of September when the rains kind of start to decline. The extra water will wash out any nutrients and amendments that you put in the soil. I'm also working on installing drip irrigation throughout my entire home garden. I actually have two gardens and I have drip irrigation installed in the second one, but I didn't do it here at home. I really like the kits from dripdepot.com. They're super easy to put together. Like I can do the whole thing by myself because the kits are just that easy. So in a couple weeks when this is done solarizing right here, I'm going to remove this and then I'm going to start planting kind of where I want to plant all my rows and crops. That way I can set up the drip irrigation to water everything for me. So in a few weeks, I will be doing a YouTube tutorial showing you how I install the entire drip irrigation system. We are still in the height of summer and the pest population is insane. I always have BT, spinosad, and organic insecticidal soap handy, which is pretty much all you need for the majority of the pests you will encounter. Try to vertical garden as much as possible, especially if you're in a rainy or humid area. This will pick the plants up off from the floor, making it harder for the pests to get on them. It also improves air circulation, helping to dry the surface of the leaves and slow down the spread of the leaf diseases. All right, so let's talk about what you can start from seed during the month of August. It's time to start seeds for a fall squash harvest. If you struggle to grow squash or pumpkins because of the worms or the squash vine borers, pick cultivars in the Kirkabite Moscata family. This group boasts thicker and harder stems that make it much more difficult for the pests like the squash bugs and vine borers to get into them. And here's just a big list of a lot of cultivars that are in the Kirkabita Moscata family. I'm not saying you won't get the pests. It is just that these cultivars can handle a lot of pest damage before they ultimately die. <laughs> so it increases your chances of harvesting something. I like to use BT or spinosad sprays to control any kind of worm or chewing insect. I will add links in the description to the same sprays that I use here in my garden. 
Luckily, we are going into the fall season when the pest pressure will decrease. It's also time to sow seeds for cucumbers, all types of cucumbers. If you want to grow extra tough, disease resistant cultivars, then stick to the Asian cultivars like these right here. But again, we are going into fall when the disease pressure will decrease. So it's okay to grow the other types of cucumbers like the pickling or market varieties. If you get powdery mildew or other leaf diseases, then just spray with one cup of hydrogen peroxide per gallon of water. And a huge note about sowing seeds for squash and cucumbers right now during the month of August. I highly recommend that you start seeds indoors. The pest will chew up your tender baby seedlings very quickly. Starting them indoors will protect them from the high pest and disease pressure situation that is present outside during the summer. All of the rain in Florida right now causes growth of pathogens like mold and fungus that spread through the air and easily will infect your baby seedlings. The situation outside is not a nice, clean, safe environment for seedlings right now. At the very least, try to sow seeds in a covered patio or screened porch because that will help keep the rain off from your seedlings and the pests and diseases. I also have YouTube video tutorials on growing squash and cucumbers from seed, which I will link below. So check those out for more in-depth details. Next up, we have yard long beans and wheat beans. Traditional bush and pole beans do not grow well in extreme summer heat, like right now in my zone nine garden. But if you're in zone eight, you're okay to start direct sowing seeds for any kind of bush or pole beans. But you still have plenty of time to direct sow seeds for the yard long beans or the winged beans. These crops take the heat and rain like a champ, not to mention they are extremely productive. I do have a how to grow yard long beans tutorial on YouTube if you want to learn more about growing yard long beans from seed. Next up, we have anything in the brassicas family. This is a huge group of veggie crops that are quite honestly some of my favorites. This includes things like broccoli, cauliflower, kale, cabbages, hot soy, bok choy, Brussels sprouts, and the list really, it goes on and on. The thing with brassicas, especially if you're in a hot zone, like zones eight and up, is if the seedlings are exposed to high heat, it will actually stunt their growth. So if you've ever tried to start them from seed and you notice that they're staying super tiny and they have not gained any new growth or nothing like that, they were probably exposed to too much heat. If you are in zones eight and up where it's still really hot outside, I do not recommend that you even try to sow seeds for anything in the brassica family outside. This is my screen porch. I have started sowing seeds for all the warm weather crops that I wanna get another harvest in before my first winter frost date arrives. So that's like the tomatoes, squashes, peppers, eggplants, melons, cucumbers, all of those things. They're fine growing here under my screened porch. They're protected from the rain, pests, and diseases. Even though we are under some shade, the temperatures are still extremely hot, but they're thriving. They're okay because they're warm weather crops. The brassicas, however, if you're going to start them from seed, I only recommend to do that indoors. That is what I'm going to be doing. So this is my seed starting kind of setup. I will be copying this setup and making a mini version of it indoors so that I can sow seeds for all the brassicas indoors. And in about two months, they will be nice big transplant sizes. It'll be October by then, and it's the perfect time to start transplanting them outside. But yeah, like I said, I do have a live class August 13th where I will go way, way into detail about starting seeds for the brassicas. So make sure you subscribe to my channel. That way you get alerted of when I go live. If you're in garden zones eight and up, you still have plenty of time to start seeds for southern peas, black eyed peas, cow peas, and okra. You can direct sow seeds for any type of the peas very easily, but I like to start okra seeds in solo cups. That way they're ready to transplant once their root systems are large enough to take over that solo cup. These crops are vigorous growers during the high heat of August. My favorite way to plant a whole bunch of cow peas or like southern peas is actually underneath my fruit trees because they kind of sprawl out and they'll fill in that area and kind of act as a living mulch. They'll keep the roots of my fruit trees a little bit cooler and they'll shade out weeds from growing through. August is also a great time to start seeds for lots of different kinds of flowers. I like to get the 72 cell seed trays and I will start sowing rows and rows of all sorts of different kinds of flowers. Some of my recommendations for flowers that handle heat, pests, and diseases pretty well, especially during the summer, is amaranth, zinnia, sunflowers, cosmos, moonflowers, celosia, blanket flower, salvia. I mean, there's really, there's a lot. If you have some areas in your garden that are completely clean, cleared of weeds and all that, you can even just direct sow seeds for the flowers right there. Just make sure you keep the soil nice and moist so that they will germinate. This right here is my Thai double blue butterfly pea and it is gorgeous. This is one of my favorite flowers in all of my garden. It is perennial here in zones nine and up. And you still have time to start this from seed if you wanted to. 
it grows these very beautiful electric blue blooms. Now this particular cultivar is called double because it has double petals. There is a single petaled variety, but this one is the double petals and I absolutely love this flower. I like to dry the flowers and make tea with it. You could also powderize the dried leaves and make an all natural blue food dye. I sell both seeds and plants for this on my website. So if you want to grow the same ones, go check out my website. August is when I start sowing seeds for all kinds of traditional herbs. And what I mean by traditional herbs are like the standard culinary European herbs like Italian basil, thyme, rosemary, sage, dill, and fennel. These types of herbs really thrive in Mediterranean-like conditions, so they don't like very extreme heat, and they like the soil to be kind of more on the dry side. This Italian basil is thriving, <laughs> despite the fact that I get rain here every single day in Florida, and I think it's because I decided to grow it in a grow bag, which dries out very, very quickly. So it is doing so much better <laughs> growing it in a grow bag than in ground or in one of my raised beds. So in August, I will start hauling out all of the seeds for all sorts of herbs. I really like to sow them in rows of a 72 cell seed tray. So I just sow seeds for tons of all of the different herbs. Depending on the herb, they might be ready for transplanting in about one to two months. It just depends what you're trying to grow. At that point, I've pretty much started planting all of my fall crops. So I really like to take those little herb plugs from the 72 cell seed trays and just pop them in, especially underneath or around my veggie crops because they help deter pests and attract beneficial insects. When it comes to cilantro or culantro, I actually have better luck just direct sowing those seeds, but I will do that in October when the temperatures kind of drop a little bit because cilantro and culantro actually do not like the high extreme heat situation that I have here in Florida. So they really don't grow well here during the summer but they grow great during our fall, winter, and spring. So whenever I see some empty spots in my garden, I just take seeds, scratch them in lightly into the soil surface, keep it nice and watered, and they germinate really quickly and grow a lot that way. I wanna show you guys this really cool herb real quick, and it tastes pretty darn similar to cilantro, but I wanted to show you guys this plant because I am so impressed. It's in the middle of August and it's thriving. It's a big bushy plant. I seriously did not think that this would thrive under the high heat and extreme conditions of my Florida garden right now, but it is doing completely fine and it's in full sun. So if you're looking for herbs that will survive high heat situations, I'm starting to add papalo to my list. As soon as this thing starts blooming, I will be drying out seeds. They look kind of similar to marigold seeds and I will list them on my website because I absolutely love it. So get started sowing your traditional herbs from seed, but you also have time to continue planting a lot of the heat loving tropical type of herbs. Here's a really big list of all of those that I recommend. This right here is like my tropical herb patch. I have turmeric, I've got ginger, I have Cuban oregano, and some Suriname spinach over there. And I find that all of these things just really thrive when they get a lot of bright morning sun, but more afternoon shade, just to give them a little break from that intense heat of the afternoon. Now let's talk about the tropical heat loving greens that you can plant right now in August. I do have seed for a couple of them that are best grown from seed and that would include New Zealand spinach and Molokia. It's very easy to start seeds for those. My preference is to sow them in four inch size pots so that way they get nice and big before you put them out in their garden. Then there's some heat loving greens that really aren't started from seed. They're usually started or propagated from cuttings. An example is this Chief Kobo's Prize south sea salad tree <laughs> try saying that really fast this is a heat tolerant leafy green it grows great in the tropics a lot of people use this as a substitute for spinach and to me it has a very mild flavor kind of similar to like lettuce and spinach put together but one of these plants gets humongous and you just need one it will produce so many leaves that you'll have plenty of greens for all of your recipe needs I do have plants for several of the different kinds of heat tolerant greens like longevity spinach, Okinawan spinach, and this South Sea salad tree on my website if you wanna try growing them. The next crop we're gonna talk about is corn. I guess a lot of gardeners are under the impression that you don't really grow corn <laughs> during August, but yes, it is possible. I do it all the time. I actually start sowing seeds for corn in January, and the last time I will succession sow more seeds is August. Corn actually thrives pretty well, even in high heat conditions, but it does require lots of water and nitrogen. So if you're in an area where it gets really, really dry during the summer, you have to monitor your corn, make sure they're getting tons of water. Here in Florida, it's raining every day, so I don't have to worry about it as much. But I do have to worry about the worms because they will chew the corn up. I cannot grow corn here if I didn't use some kind of treatment to control the worms. 
for corn specifically, I recommend the use of spinosad, not BT, spinosad. So spinosad is the same thing as BT. It's an all natural organic bacteria. It kills them by disrupting their digestive system. But spinosad has the added benefit that it also kills on contact. So it's just like a little bit stronger. And I find that the corn earworm, for whatever reason, is just slightly a more stronger and tougher worm compared to the other types of worms that I see in my garden. So I use spinosad and you really have to like stay on top of it, monitor and check your corn plants every single day. As soon as you see that worm damage, you have to spray with spinosad to control the worm population. If you can't do that, then I do not recommend you even bother growing corn. You're basically just going to be attracting a ton of worms and pests into your garden. But yes, it totally is possible to continue sowing seeds for corn right now in the month of August. Here in zone 9, it does not get cold for me until the very end of December. So I have tons of time to plant the like long maturing corn varieties, so to speak. Those are the ones that take like 85 to 90 days to be ready for harvest from seed. But if you're in zone 8, you're obviously going to have your winter first frost a little bit sooner than me here in zone 9. So I recommend that you grow the varieties that are quick maturing. That would be like the 65 or 75 day maturing corn varieties. That way you can ensure that you get your harvest out before your first winter frost comes. And on the subject of early maturing varieties, it's also kind of wise to choose the cultivars of certain crops that are like miniature form, like these miniature mini eggplants. This one is called Little Fingers. And I say that because if they're smaller fruiting, they're usually more early to start producing from seed than the regular full size varieties. So if you're kind of concerned about the oncoming, you know, cold fronts and stuff like that, Try growing the miniature or like the personal size varieties of the same types of vegetables and fruit. This little fingers eggplant can be harvested when it's just a couple inches long. I think this one is probably like four inches long or so. I also have another miniature eggplant cultivar called the Thai Lavender Frog and it produces more round small eggplants that are probably around one to two inches in diameter at time of harvest. Don't be fooled that because it comes in a smaller size that it produces less. It's actually quite the opposite. I find that when a cultivar of eggplant or even like cherry tomatoes or like a personal size watermelon, they tend to be smaller at harvest, but the plants make up for it because they just produce a lot. It's also kind of smart to grow the quick maturing or like smaller size varieties, not just because of the oncoming of winter, but if you live in an extreme environment, there's a lot of disease and pest pressure, then you want to hurry up and plant something from seed and then harvest it and be done with it. Take it out of your garden. It's done. So these miniature dwarf personal size cultivars or varieties of things are a great option. If you're in zones eight and up, you can continue planting a ton of different tropical fruit crops. Here's a big list of the ones that I recommend. Right here behind me is a Barbados cherry tree. And this is like one of my favorite tropical fruit crops. It produces multiple flushes of cherry per year. And they're so good. They're really juicy. They have a lot of fruity flavor to them. They taste like fruit punch to me. Beneath this area here, I have a ton of other tropical stuff. I have shampoo ginger and lots and lots of pineapples. I love growing pineapples. There is nothing like the flavor of a fully ripened on the plant pineapple. It's so worth it to me that I have like 20, 25 plants. I actually, I'm looking at some right now that I need to harvest. Pineapples are a great choice to put something edible underneath, you know, other trees. Pineapples are also another neat choice if you're trying to get away with HOA requirements because they look like houseplants. They look like bromeliads. Actually, they are part of the bromeliad family. So I have a bunch of them in the front of my house. It looks pretty ornamental while providing something edible. Well, that's my comprehensive list for all the things that you can start planting in the month of August. If I missed anything, please comment below so I can add it to my list. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up. You have no idea how much that helps out my channel. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. That way you get notified of when I post new videos. And more importantly, when I go live and have some sort of a gardening class, like the fall gardening class that I'm doing right now. The next class is Sunday, August 13th at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my live class.